Hey, it's Pat here, and in this video, I'm gonna reveal 10 different passive income strategies that are working for me right now. And in fact, one of them, as you can see on the screen right now, is over four and a half million dollars in earnings since I started. I'm gonna share that, and also two important things for each of these items. Number one, exactly how you can get started, the best way to get started. And number two, the biggest mistake that I personally made with each of these so that you can avoid the same traps that I fell into. So. Here we go, and let's start with number one, YouTube ad revenue. We're on YouTube right now, so we might as well talk about it. This YouTube channel started in 2009, that's a long time ago, but it didn't start earning an income until I turned ads on much, much later. And since then, you can see the total on the screen right now that this channel has earned. I have another YouTube channel in the Pokemon collection space, as you can see here, and it has already began to start earning an income as well through YouTube ad revenue. Both of these have also earned an income through YouTube memberships, people subscribing to support uh, creators like myself. The best way to get started is to just publish videos. In order to gain an income through this means, you have to have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time on YouTube, Therefore, you just gotta get started and keep pumping out those videos. The faster you do that, the more you're gonna get your wheels going and start to get an understanding of what works and what doesn't. And you're gonna be better off by publishing even if the videos are bad versus just waiting until you're perfectly ready and the time is right because the time is right was a long time ago. And this relates to the biggest mistake that I made on YouTube a while back, which was worrying about being perfect. There was a good two year period where I didn't publish anything because I was just too afraid the videos weren't good enough. And it wasn't until 2017 that I started to get back into the motion and the income started to climb from there. Number two, publishing books. I currently have three books. I have Let Go, Will It Fly, and Superfans. I wrote these books a long, long time ago. One of them actually over 10 years ago. And all of the books still continue to provide an income for me every single month. They're for sale on Amazon and I'll share a report in the description below for one of my books, Will It Fly, where I revealed exactly how much money that made and it was in the six figure range, even as a self published author. The number one way to get started is to just write a crappy first draft. The hard thing about this is you're gonna wanna make your book perfect right out the bat, but any author will tell you that the first draft is the worst draft and that's where you get all your ideas out on paper then you finally sift through that sand and build your sand castle and you're gonna have a lot of leftover stuff that you're not gonna even use. The biggest mistake that I made was thinking that I had to write everything that I knew in one book. In fact, the riches are in the niches. If you pick a particular audience and a particular problem that that audience has and you write about that and you solve their problems and you make their life more convenient or you inspire them or you entertain them in whatever way you can, well, you're gonna find better results. The riches are in the niches and with books that is definitely Definitely the case. Selling digital products. I've been selling my own digital products ever since I started online. It started with an ebook to help people pass an architectural exam. And today I help people do all kinds of things from podcasting to affiliate marketing, email marketing, webinars. What I love about this is although it takes a little bit of time to put these digital courses together, what's amazing is once they're done, they're done. And the whole thing could be automated, which is really, really amazing. And as you saw earlier, and as will pop up on the screen again, we are approaching $5 million in total earnings. And yes, this is across multiple courses, but even our most popular course, Power Up Podcasting, has well over $2 million in earnings. And the beauty of this is not only do I have money coming in, but I have incredible thank you notes from people who said their lives have been changed as a result of the work that I've been able to help them with. That's what it's about. It's about serving first in the way that you know you can. The best way to get started is to talk to an audience, discover what their problems are. Again, the riches are in the niches, but what are they dealing with? What are their struggles? Pick one struggle, find one person and help them get one result. And that's gonna unlock so much, not just in a process that you could teach later, but in your mind about the confidence that you have to be able to help people. One problem, one customer, one result. Start there. One of the biggest mistakes I made was thinking that the value of the course was in just how much stuff was in there, right? Like more video, more content, more worksheets, more text. That equals bigger price and I could charge more. Eh, not true. In fact, value comes in convenience. Some of the best courses that we offer are actually our shortest because it helps a person get a result faster. I mean, what do you think is more valuable? Helping a person change a tire in five hours or 15 minutes? Value is not tied to how much time something takes. It's the result that is promised and then earned. Number four, let's talk about physical products. I actually co-invented a product with my editor, Caleb, and he and I created what's called the SwitchPod at switchpod.co. It's a fancy little tripod that opens and closes, and it solves a very specific problem in a very specific niche. 
videographers, but not just any videographers, ones who want a compact tripod that's easy to pack away, super lightweight, and very sturdy. How did we get started with this? Well, we went to a conference and just talked to people about their biggest problems. What were the little frictions that they had? And we found out that there was not a good solution for just holding a camera when you're vlogging. So we created that. The biggest mistake, however, was thinking that we were gonna build a solution overnight because I was used to creating digital products. I just talked about that. But the physical product world takes a lot, lot longer. It took us, I think, 14 to 15 months to create 13 different prototypes. We started with cardboard and then cutouts and then 3D printed versions and then a metal version. It just took a lot of time. And also, of course, physical products take a lot more money too. But we were able to kickstart this thing in February of 2019 to nearly half a million dollars and nearly 5,000 backers. It was just such an amazing experience. And the cool thing about physical products is a person purchases it, they get it, and it could already be used, right? Like they don't have to go through a course to get the result. The result comes immediately when they use this thing, and that's really fulfilling. Number five, paid memberships or membership communities. Community is, in my opinion, the future of all business, and building an audience is very different than building a community. We have a community called SPI Pro, where people pay a premium to have access every month to not just myself and my team, but everybody else in the community as well. The price acts as a filter to make sure that people who are in there are serious about the businesses that they're building. And it also puts skin in the game so that they're gonna show up and participate and get value and give value. There are free and paid memberships today about anything. And SPI Pro is a premium membership and it's earning hundreds of thousands of dollars per year. And it was just launched a couple years ago during the pandemic. Now you might be like, Pat, what do you have in there? You already have courses. What other content do you put in here? It's not about the content at all. In fact, it is not a content play whatsoever. It is a community play, it's a connection play. And in this space online where especially communities of a certain kind who have a certain language, who have a certain culture, who have a certain uh, understanding of, of something specific that maybe the people near them don't know, well, we can be the one to step up to create a safe space for these people to come together and find each other. And that is a value. And because it's a value, it's something you could charge for. The best way to get started with this is to maybe bring a small group of people into something like a Facebook group or a circle group. You can go to circle.so. It's a company that allows you to create sort of a Facebook Slack type of feel, but on your own that you get to control. And that's what we use for our communities too. And bring a small group in there and start chatting and seeing what that's like. The biggest mistake, however, is thinking that a community is passive. It is actually very, very not passive. It's very active. It's mostly passive for me. I mean, I'm still active in there. We do AMAs and we have events and challenges every single month that I participate in, but I hired a team. We have a community director and, and some managers and some people in there to make sure that the community is engaged and just to keep the conversations flowing. So if you think that you could set up community and set it and forget it, that's not gonna be the case. Communities definitely take work and although the recurring income every single month is fantastic, it is not necessarily set and forget. So that's just something to keep in mind and something that became a big lesson for me right away. And that's why I'm grateful for the team. Oh, and by the way, if you wanna check out SPI Pro and see if it's the right thing for you, we do let people in once per quarter. You can apply to see if it's the right fit. Go to spipro.com. Again, that's spipro.com. It's as easy as that. Number six, coaching. I have four students who I meet with every single week for 30 minutes each week, and it's up to them to come to me with the right questions, and I challenge them, I support them, I answer their questions, but I also ask a lot of questions to help unpack not just what's going on in their business, but what's going on up here as well. There's a really good book called The Coaching Habit by Michael Bungay Stanier that I would highly recommend. I use that process for how I coach my students, and you should too. And that's actually where I'd recommend you get started. Check out that book and then find one person that you could coach. I would charge for that because your time is valuable and you should charge for that. Maybe you could start a little bit smaller and then increase your price over time as you add more students, but it is such a fulfilling thing to be able to coach a person through a process. And coaching is not, and this is the mistake, coaching is not just giving advice. As Michael Bungay Stainer says, you can become the advice monster, which only overwhelms a person even more often. You might have ideas and things that you wanna share, but first, you wanna ask questions to see if this person can come up with those ideas. Because like Inception, if they can come up with those ideas, it's gonna be more meaningful and they're gonna be more likely to take action on that. You, knowing what those answers perhaps should be, can just ask the right questions to guide them there. That's kind of actually how I parent too. Hey bud, do you, do you think licking the floor is actually healthy for the human body? Now coaching, I do one-on-one, -on -one, but there's also group coaching that I do in a cohort-based style fashion. And that is number seven here, a cohort-based, what we call, bootcamp or cohort-based course. Now, remember how I have those digital courses? Well, I take those digital courses and turn them into six to eight week boot camps where I essentially just teach the same thing, but live with people over the lessons over the course of those weeks. 
it's really cool because it's more interactive. There's a couple times that we meet per week, once on Monday and once on Thursday for office hours. But other than that, it's pretty hands off because they already have the lessons that they're watching inside of the digital course. Those little touch points along the way hold people accountable. And as a result of those touch points and a little bit of access to you, you can charge a lot more. For my podcasting course, for example, which retails at $699, the digital course, I charged $5,000 to have people fly to San Diego to go through that entire process in two days. That was in person, but that was you know cohort-based, but it was, it was smushed into two and a half days. But the online version of this, the six to eight week bootcamp, we charged nearly $2,000 for. So now you have these tiered pricing levels depending on the level of access that they have to you, and you can get paid for extra time. The best way to get started is to find a group of people who might want to go through a certain process with you, and you can teach them that process. You don't even need the digital course ready yet. In fact, this can help create what the digital course will become. And by working with people a couple times a week and hearing their feedback and asking questions like, what do you think is missing or what are you having trouble with? Those are all things that you can pull in and put into the digital course when you film that. And then you have two options. You can join me in the digital course or you can join me live in the cohort-based course. You see how that works? The biggest mistake with a cohort-based course is not encouraging people to communicate with each other. Yes, there is accessibility to you and your team for sort of hosting this thing, but there's huge benefit in getting the students to talk to each other. So if you use something like Zoom to manage these cohorts, make sure to spend a lot of time with little groups, right, breakout groups, so that people can offer feedback to each other. Some of the best best advice and feedback that we've gotten was to do exactly that. And we've been doing a lot of that in our recent boot camps. We actually just wrapped one up related to uh, teaching online courses. And uh, it was an amazing experience. It was super fun. Number eight, this is my all time favorite way to generate an income online because it's easy and it doesn't require any work more than just some upfront work. And uh, you can really help a lot of people. And that is affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing is recommending other people or other companies products, products that already exist, products that people are already paying for. And if you can be the person to be the conduit, the person who recommends it, who shares your opinion about something and people are like, cool, I'll take that opinion and I'll buy that product, that company will pay you as a result. I've talked about this extensively here on the channel. Affiliate marketing is again, one of the simplest things to do. It's, not, it's hard to master though, because there's a, there's a lot of nuance to it, right? You don't wanna just go, hey everybody, go buy this product, I promise you it's gonna be great. But showing people the experience that you have with a product is really the thing that you wanna do. I made the mistake of working with other products because they had a great commission, not because necessarily the product was actually gonna be the most helpful. You wanna start with the pains and struggles that your target audience has, and what are their goals? Find products that can help support that, and if you have experience with those products too, even better. Talk about that, showcase it, demonstrate it, and when people see what it's done for you, they're gonna be likely to wanna go through the same process and pick up that thing through your affiliate link so you can get paid. So start there, again. Figure out what that number one problem is and find a solution for that. And again, it doesn't have to be a solution that you create. Somebody else could have created it already. And you can be an affiliate for almost anything, for physical products, digital products, coaching programs, software, even events. I'm an affiliate for this microphone. I'm an affiliate for other microphones. I talk about this camera that I'm using right now and I have videos on that that demonstrate how I use them and the benefit of them. And then I link to them and then I get paid. Amazon pays me. These companies pay me. You can make a lot of money by just doing that upfront work and then letting the platforms do the work for you. Number nine, podcast ad revenue. So I have a podcast at Smart Passive Income. I also have a secondary podcast, Ask Pat, and actually a few others. And on most of those shows, we include advertisements. We could charge anywhere between $25 and $50 CPM, or cost per milli or cost per thousand downloads. So let's do some quick math here. Even on the lower end, $20 CPM. If you get 10,000 downloads per episode, that's 10,000, so let's multiply 10 times 20. That's $200 per episode at a $20 CPM for 10,000 downloads. Now let's say you have four episodes come out every single month, one per week. Well, multiply 200 times four, that's $800 a month. You can see how this adds up. And depending on where you put ads into your podcast, you might generate even more. Maybe it's a mid-roll or a pre-roll in the beginning of the show and you wanna charge more for that. Maybe you combine your ads on your podcast with ads in your email newsletter. You can charge more for that. Now, if you don't have a podcast, obviously you will wanna get started with a podcast. I have a tutorial that you can use down below that you could check out so that you can get started. But if you have a podcast already, the first thing you wanna do is find a company that you're already working with or a company that you already use. Maybe you've heard them advertise on another show before or maybe not. 
but I would recommend reaching out, even if you don't have a large amount of numbers. The biggest mistake that I made was thinking that my numbers weren't big enough before because the people who I heard advertise were huge and these big brands. But the truth is a lot of advertisers now are very excited to promote, especially on smaller podcasts that have loyal audiences. The conversion rates are off the charts because the trust that you've earned with that audience means so much and that's very valuable and you should be charging for that. The other mistake was just, again, related to that, waiting too long. I started my podcast in 2010 and I started putting ads in in 2014. I missed out on a lot of opportunity because there were a lot of companies that could have served my audience and it could have been a win-win-win situation. So a big mistake was just waiting like is the mistake for most of these things that I'm listing right now. And number 10, being an advisor for other companies. What does that mean? Well, that means actually I'm not just an affiliate for some of these products that I promote but I'm actually an advisor, like a formal advisor. I own shares of these companies as a result of the partnerships and the relationships that we've created over time. Many of those started as affiliate relationships, and then with the advice that I was offering and the relationships that was being built between the two companies, mine and theirs, we decided to get a little bit more formal in the help that I could offer them. And the help that I offer them is not just promoting their brand, but it's actually offering real advice to help them grow their company. I'm an advisor for SamCard. I'm an advisor for ConvertKit and Circle.so, as well as Squadcast. I was also an advisor for Teachable, and then it got acquired. And guess what? When it got acquired, I got a really sizable check as a result. Now, how might you get started with actual advisory work? Well, reach out to companies that you have a relationship with already and see if they're even open to that possibility or ask what would it take for them to be open to having you come on as a formal advisor. What's the responsibility on my end? Well, it's not just to continue to support the company, but it's to offer advice when needed. It's to show up maybe once or twice a month to a meeting. And more than that, it's to build relationships and make connections that can be beneficial for the company too. It's a really interesting way to have some influence on a company without actually having to like do the day-to-day -day work in that company. It's really, really cool. And you can unlock that yourself too. The biggest mistake, honestly, is, is just underselling yourself. You know, I used to undersell myself all the time, not thinking that I was qualified or had the skill sets that would actually be beneficial for another company. And it wasn't until another company gave me a chance and started telling me and revealing how much actually I could contribute that I then seeked out other companies to be an advisor for as well. So don't undersell yourself. You have so much to offer. And actually, here's a bonus one. Number 11, investments. Taking a lot of this passive income and these earnings that have been coming in and putting them into smart assets that I can, you know, not just have fun and play around with, but that actually get that money to work for itself and grow even more. That means investing in the stock market. That means investing into real estate. That means investing perhaps into other companies as well. And I've started doing a little bit of angel investing on the side, which has been really, really fun and neat. Actually, I'm curious, of the 11 things that I mentioned here, which one seems to pique your interest the most? Tell me in the comment section and I'll perhaps create some videos in the future about those specific numbers if there's interest there. Thank you so much and appreciate you.